नमस्ते बच्चों मैं सुरेश स्वदेशी एन सी आर टी सिलेबस क्लास सेवन बुक इंग्लिश चैप्टर नंबर टू पार्ट टू मृदु क्रैप्ट अप टू दिंडो लाली वो सिटिंग ए लिटिल डिस्टेंस अवे ऑकवर्डली होल्डिंग हर वायलिन एंड बो स्ट्रिंग हर एल्बो जटिंग आउट एंड हर आईज ग्लेज विद कंसनट्रेशन इन फ्रंट ऑफ हर विद मोस्ट ऑफ इज बैक टू दिंडो वॉज द बोनी फिगर ऑफ द म्यूजिक मास्टर He had a mostly bald head with a fringe of oiled black hair falling around his ears and an old fashioned tub. A gold chain gleamed around his leathery neck and diamond ring glittered on his hand as it glided up and down the stem of the violin. Large foot stuck out from the beneath his gold bordered vesti is and he was beating time on the floor with a scrawny big toe. He played a few notes. Lali stumbled behind him on her violin. which looked quite helpless and unhappy in her hands what a difference the music master's notes seemed to float up and settle perfectly into the invisible tracks of the melody it was like wheels of a train fitting smoothly into the rails and whizzing along as ravi said mrithu stared sta- stared at that huge greedinged hand moving effortlessly up the violin stem making lovely music squack there was lali dealing again amma amma came a wail from the gate amma o oh, ravi sent that beggar away cried his mother from the back veranda where she was chatting with tapi he has been coming here every day for the past week and it's time he found another house to beg for fatih explained to tapi Ridu and Mina followed Ravi out. The beggar was already in the garden, making himself quite at home. He had spread his upper cloth under the neem tree and was leaning against its trunk, apparently prepared to take a little snooze while he waited for the arms to appear. "Go away," said Ravi sternly. "My party says it's time you found another house to beg from." The beggar opened his eyes very wide and gazed at each of the children one by one. The ladies of this house he said at last in a voice choked with feeling are very kind souls i have kept my body and soul together on their generosity for a whole week i cannot believe that they would turn me away he raised his voice amma amma o oh, said his wail might be but it certainly wasn't feeble it began in a deep strong rumble somewhere in his withered belly and came booming out of his mouth with its few remaining teeth stained brown with beetle chewing ravi tell him there is nothing left in the kitchen called rukumani and he is not to come again tell him that she sounded fed up ravi didn't have to repeat it all to the beggar what his mother said had been easy for them all to hear there under the neem tree the beggar sat up and shouted i'll go I'll go," he said wearily, "and let me have a rest here under this tree. The sun is so hot, the tar is melted on the road. My feet are already blistered." He stretched out his feet to show large, pink, peeling blisters on the soles of his bare feet. "I suppose he doesn't have the money to buy chapels," Mrithu whispered to me, Naravi. "Have you got an old pair in the house somewhere?" I don't know," said Ravi. "Mine are too small to fit his feet, or I'd given them to him, and his feet were larger than Mridu and Mina's." The beggar was shaking out his upper clothes and tightening his dhoti. He raised his eyes and looked fearfully at the road, gleaming in the afternoon heat. "He needs something on his feet," Mina said. "A big eyes feeling. It's not fair." "Shh." said Ravi I'm thinking about it blubbering it's not fair it's not fair is it going to be help in 2 minutes he will be frying his feet on the road what he needs is a pair of chapels so where do we get them come let's search the house he pushed Mridu and Meena into the house just as he stepped into the veranda Mridu's eyes fell on old looking chapels she had noticed when she arrived Ravi she whispered to him who are those Ravi turned and glanced at the shabby looking but sturdy old sleepers he beamed and nodded 
These are just the right size, he said, picking them up. Mridu and Meena followed him nervously back into the garden. Here, said Ravi to the beggar, dropping the slippers in front of the old man. Wear these and don't come back. The beggar stared at the sleepers, hurriedly flung his stove over his shoulders, pushed his feet into them and left, muttering a blessing to the children. In a minute, he had vanished around the corner of the street. The music master came out of the house and took an unappreciative look at the three of them sitting quietly under the tree, playing marbles. Then he searched for his chapels in the veranda where he had put them. Lali, called the, he called after a few moments. She hurried up to him. Have you seen my chapels, my dear? I remember having kept them here. Ravi, Mridu and Meena silently watched Lali and the music master search every corner of the veranda. He scurried around looking over the railing and crouching near the flower pots to look between them. Brand knew they were. I went all the way to Mount Road to buy them. He went on saying, they cost a whole month's peace, do you know? Soon Lali went in to tell her mother, Rukumani appeared, looking harassed with Pati following her. Where could they be? It's really quite upsetting to think someone might have stolen them. So many vendors come to the door, worried Pati. Rukumani caught sight of Ravi Mridu and Meena sitting under the tree. Have you children? She began and then seeing they were curiously quiet went on more slowly. Seen anyone lurking around the veranda? A sharp V-shaped line had formed between her eyebrows. Another straight, tighter one appeared in place of her usually soft, pleasant mouth. Rukumani was angry, thought Mridu with a shiver. She wouldn't be so upset if she knew about the poor beggar with sores on his feet. She tried to tell herself. Taking a deep breath, she cried, Rukumani, there was a beggar here. Poor thing, he had such boils on his feet. So, said Rukumani grimly, turning to Ravi, you gave the music master's chapels to that old beggar who turns up here? Children these days, grown, grown party. Amma, didn't you tell me about Karna who gave away everything, uh, gave away everything he had? Even his old ear earrings, he was so kind and generous. Silly, snapped Rukumani. Karna didn't give away other people's things. He only gave away his own. But my chapels wouldn't have pitied the beggar's feet. Ravi just brassly on. And Amma, if they did fit, would you really not have minded? Ravi, said Rukumani, very angry now. Go inside this minute. She hurried indoors and brought out Gopu Mama's hardly worn new chapels. These should fit you, sir. Please put these on. I'm so sorry. My son has been very naughty. The music master's eyes lit up. He put them on, trying not to look too happy. Well, I suppose these will have to do. These days children have no respect for elders. What to do? A Hanuman in Karnal. Incarnate. Only Rama can save such a naughty fellow. Rukumani's eyes flashed. She didn't seem to like being called, Ravi being called a monkey, even a holy monkey. She stood stiff and straight by the front door. It was clear she wanted him to leave quickly. When he had clattered off in his new chapels, she said, Mridu, come in and have some tiffin. Honestly, how do you, how do you children think of such things? Thank God your Gopu Mama doesn't wear his chapels to work. As he walked towards the kitchen with Mridu and Meena, she suddenly began to laugh. But he is always in such a hurry to throw off his shoes and shops and get into his chapels as soon as he comes home. What's your Mama going to say this evening when I tell him I gave his chapels to the music master? Uh, written by Vasanta Surya and from Mridu in Madras, Guru Chuka turns up. So children, go uh, watch this video and benefit yourself. Thank you.